All right, um, let's move on into uh, leadership and followership and uh, do a little integrative look at it and try to tie these two together. The, they've been bifurcated for too long and it's time to bring them back together again. So one of the things that we want to do, and I'm going to give you, this will kind of help you capture the course to a certain extent. This will be part of the model, but it won't be the complete thing. But I'm, so I'm going to layer it to you. I tend to layer my stuff in, as we present it, give you some introduction to it, and then um, add to it as we go. So this is um, what we want to do. You notice the, in the pitch, the eye, did you see in the eye there? You can see my reflection in that eye. <laughs> That's one of those gypsy banners. <laughs> All right, um, the integration of the two. And it definitely is, is so tied together, but we have so missed the integration of leadership and followership. And most of us have at least read books or studied somewhat on leadership. And we're going to add the whole side of followership to this. And notice they are integrated together there. Um, <clears throat> Hostoff would say that leadership and subordinate, he uses the term subordinateship or followership would be the same one. He, calls it, they, he says what? They are inseparable. And that is so, so true. We have separated them, but they are inseparable. And so that's one of the goals of the class is to bring that back to our attention that these two are inseparable. And we need to see the interrelation of those two. We also need to realize that power is associated. And often we think power is only in the hands of the leaders. But we have to realize power is also in the hands of followers, okay? All right, so you are just lowly students, right? Just you have to do what the teacher says and you have to try to get a good grade and you just do whatever happens, right? And if you don't like the teacher, well, you know, you still gotta do the work to get, or do you actually have power as a student? Do students have power? <laughs> ah, there's a little evaluation <laughs> at the end of the courses, right? That you, and it's anonymous usually, right? So, I mean, hey, you know, you can, there's some power in evaluations, right? Yeah. And this is, I think, one of the things we have to realize that it's not just leaders who have power, but followers also have power. Okay, look at the people power movement that took place in, 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 uh, in the Philippines. They overthrew the government, all right? The U.S. played a little role in that, but it was after, it was after the what people did their thing. <clears throat> so leaders have followers power and followers have power. Okay, in a church situation, pastor says, we're going to build a new building. If the followers don't want to do that, what do they do? They have no power? They close their pocketbooks, right? They close their checkbooks. Yeah. And so uh, that's their way of answering back. Yeah. They close the checkbook. <laughs> That's their power. So every follower has power. Every leader has power. <clears throat> but we have tended to look at powers on the leadership side. Okay. <clears throat> so everyone has power. That's the, that's the a key point here. The, the key question is, how do they use that power? That's the key question. How do leaders use it? How do followers use it? Because why? They can use it in a very corrupt way or they can use it in a very positive way, a very incorrupt way. So followers can abuse power just as leaders can abuse power. <clears throat> it's both there. They're both there. <clears throat> 
democracy. Uh, is it possible for the those who are the, the people to use their power corruptly? Mm -hmm. A three day week now. <laughs> we got our four day, let's go for three. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, and they, they abuse that power, yeah. And that's what you, you'll see that on both sides. You'll see leaders using abuse, you know, being abusive in their use of power, and you'll see followers being abusive in the use of their power. Because why? It exists for both sides. It exists for both sides. <clears throat> Obviously, the time comes because of the lack of recognition. Ah. Uh, like the leaders yeah. wouldn't even attribute that as the power of the people. Yeah, yeah. The people do not know that that is their power, but it's the only way they can express themselves. Yeah. And so they have to do something mm -hmm. to make a mess, to get their message out. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things I want to paint this in a bigger picture now, that how leaders use their power and how followers use their power is really playing out in the bigger picture of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And so there's influence and there's the source of power, both negative and positive, um, that's there. And this gets into the whole cosmic drama that's going on out there. And so we're just little parts playing in a bigger arena here in relation to how we do use our power and how we, as leaders and as, or as followers. When we put it in the, si the, the, in the framework of the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan, we have the ability then to use servanthood or we have the ability to use selfishness. We can all play out in those two ways. So we want to see it, you know, broader than just here's leadership and followership. No, it's being played out in the cosmic drama, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. <clears throat> okay, good. And summarize here, leaders and followers find themselves embroiled in a relationship that is driven by power and purpose that can serve others or self. There's what we got. And, you know, it goes back and forth. It goes back and forth like that all the time. So leaders and followers find themselves embroiled in a relationship that is driven by power and purpose that can serve others or can serve self. Depends on what you do with it, right? So putting it all together, that's where we're going. And that will give us the bigger picture of what we're doing. And we'll start to, to take that apart or add to that as we, as we go. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.